Luke Larrative joining us from Seneca Financial Solutions. Luke, a very good Friday afternoon to you. So, good afternoon, Andrew. How are you? Very well, thanks. Yeah, and the, the market's looking pretty positive at the same time. Um, how, how are you gauging sentiment at the moment? And I guess some of this is also flowing in from uh, what we're seeing stateside. Yeah, certainly. I think, uh, you know, interest rates and inflation expectations are what's driving uh, the sort of more medium term, uh, I suppose, markets at the moment, both here, here and abroad. Uh, you know, the, the local Aussie bonds have gone up, uh, you know, dramatically in the last couple of weeks. And that's really uh, indicating to investors that shift from that sort of lower for longer interest rate environment into this sort of potentially rising interest rate environment. We're seeing, you know, a number of analysts bring forward their, their rate height expectations and, you know, talk about property prices and, and PE ratios and, and where the market's going to be. So I think there's been a real flight to quality. Um, I think that's been brought with a little bit of danger. We've seen some traditional quality names like, you know, Domino's Pizza, say, for example, get whacked and, and growth expectations be well above where uh, what they're actually able to achieve in their first quarter update. So I think it's a it's a flight to quality with, you know, with uh, some degree of risk in, in, in that trade and, and certainly, um, you know, rates being the, the, the key discussion point at the moment. Yeah, interesting you, you mentioned those stocks because I look at the flip side here, the gold stocks are absolutely flying today. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm not much of a, a gold bull or bear and I'm, I'm not much of a resources, you know, investor as a general comment, but certainly it's pretty obvious uh, that the gold, for, gold price, you know, does sort of follow that uh, US tips price. And, and I think that's a really good indicator for investors to keep an eye on. Uh, has been moving higher. Gold price has kind of, uh, you know, not gone anywhere. And I think there's a bit of a catch up trade there. Gold market in Australia is kind of bifurcated between those sort of premium uh, producers on seven times EV to EBITDA and the cheaper ones on kind of four times EV to EBITDA. I think that certainly the value um, or the opportunity for investors there on that gold trade is to find those one or two stocks that are in that cheap bucket that might over the next year or two result up in that in that re-rate to that seven times level. So, um, you know, we tend to sort of chase these the, the higher quality, more stable, diversified producers. But I think there are a couple of opportunities uh, down that down that uh, cheaper end. You mentioned chasing high quality. That's a phrase I've been hearing a lot this week. I guess particularly, <laughs> I bet. yeah. Well, well, obviously, with the prospect of uh, rising inflation, rising rates, um, and I'm just interested to get a perspective too, Luke. Before we get into a couple of stock picks that you're looking at, uh, whether you have adjusted your portfolio, certainly, you know, most recently. Yeah, we do. We've made a few changes recently. Um, and without going to specifics, I suppose, uh, the overriding theme is just looking for those stocks which we think are now X growth or their growth is going to slow. We don't necessarily, we're not too concerned about the companies longer term and, you know, we certainly might revisit them. But I think there's there's names there inside the ASX 200 and certainly in the smaller end of the market where their business is just been really benefiting by some of these COVID conditions. And, you know, that might be the automakers or sort of, you know, the auto exposed, I should say, not automakers, but where we've been buying new cars and traveling domestically. Some of that money is going to shift, as you were saying about Qantas earlier, you know, to better conditions for, for companies like Qantas and, and international travel taking some of that market share. I think some of the other, you know, domestically focused uh, beneficiaries are where, you know, you've got, you've got to have some... Um, I suppose, concern around just how much their earnings can continue to grow and how sustainable that is, um, and, and maybe look to some of these more cyclical names with a bit more international uh, flavour. So, Luke, another theme dominating this week, of course, is what's going on at COP26 in Glasgow as uh, the planet leaders consider how we move forward as far as dealing with climate change is concerned. Now, I know you've been taking a look at the green side of your portfolio and how you play that at the moment. Um, so what, what opportunities are you seeing as we see this transition, of course, into renewables and the electrification of the planet? Uh, yeah, I suppose, you know, anyone who knows me knows, um, you know, this has been a, a key part of our investment thesis for, for a number of years now. Um, and, you know, the, the biggest win we've had is without a doubt Vulcan Energy Resources, the codes of VUL, Vulcan are developing, you know, the world's first zero carbon lithium project in the Upper Rhine Valley in Germany. Vulcan's been one of the best performing stocks on the ASX for the last sort of 18 months, realistically. And, um, you know, we invested first invested via a placement at 40 cents. Um, and I think I bought it on this program for the first time, you know, sub a dollar. 
Um, the company's come under some recent scrutiny with a short report coming out from J Capital, you know, that was pretty much short on facts and, and long on hyperbole. So, um, you know, not nothing too much to worry about there, I don't think. Um, the company gave a really detailed and comprehensive response. And, um, you know, from my perspective, it's just been further proof that management are just top drawer. And, um, you know, Vulcan, I think, could be one of Australia's great sort of mining success stories over the next five or 10 years. Um, you know, but that being said, did it did impact the share price? Share price has fallen from, you know, circa 15 bucks back down to kind of 11 bucks roughly. And, and it's bounced a little bit back to sort of 12, 13 bucks at the moment. Uh, I think a lot of retail investors were kind of, you know, sell first, think later in this instance. And I, and I know for a fact there's been a number of institutional, you know, long only investors coming in, either establishing new positions for the first time or, or topping up existing positions. You know, analysts have got price targets of, you know, over 20 bucks for this stock. The MPV for it's, you know, closer to 30 bucks a share and it's trading at under $13 a share. So, you know, it, this might be a really good opportunity for some investors who perhaps feel they missed out on the first run of this stock to, to get in now when it's actually, you know, de-risked and a lot of the uh, a lot of the risks are sort of taken off the table, which, you know, uh, those early investors did face. Um, you know, we're more bullish than ever on this business. It's well managed, doing something that's, you know, completely new and, and novel and, um, you know, doing it in a really sustainable way, which is, which is great and, and we think, um, you know, 300 million bucks in the bank, partnered with Hatch, DuPont, Renault, Umicore, BNP Paribas, Goldman Sachs, LG. Um, you know, they're they're in uh, rare air at the moment, and, and I think it's a great opportunity for investors. Yeah, interesting you say that because obviously, look at that chart. They're even just over the past 12 months, they're appreciating 10 times, uh, which uh, I guess you look at it and think, oh, I've missed out. But you're saying no, there's still plenty of growth there. Yeah, for sure. And I think investors often get caught up in that sort of, uh, you know, mental trap of, oh, I've missed out. I think you need to have first have an idea of what intrinsic value is. Uh, if you're talking about it, a business that's, you know, worth $30 on an MPV basis, I'm not saying necessarily it needs to trade there tomorrow and it doesn't face risk between here and, and being a $30 company, um, you know, it does face a lot less risk than when if you bought it at a dollar or $2 or, or 40 cents, like when we first bought it, and they hadn't even proved if they could do what they said they were going to do yet. All those things are gone now, and I think um, you know we're still left with operational risk, development risk, permitting risk. There's no doubt there's risk involved, but I think at this price, your risk reward equation is really attractive, and you've kind of got a lot of upside, sort of with you know they flagged brownfield acquisitions, which could get them into production sooner than expected. They flagged you know acquiring more land and looking to grow the resource, which you know is reasonably easy to do with 3D seismic um, and that that amount of cash at bank. Yep. And, and I think there's you know, scope for them to do more off-takes and, and more financing deals. All right. That is Vulcan Energy Resources. We're staying in the green space, of course. Luke, and the other one you're looking at at the moment, DMEM. So this is wastewater treatment. Yeah, yeah wastewater treatment business. Um, again, sort of one of our house stocks and something I've, I've liked and owned for a long time. Um, and, you know, from my perspective, it's just a business that's got a cutting edge kind of technology at the core of the business. And they're using that to develop a recurring revenue sort of build and operate model um, of vertically integrated water treatment for a range of industries where they're getting sort of really strong operational momentum at the moment is kind of across the mining sector, food and beverage, um, textiles and kind of heavy industry. Um, so, you know, there's, there's some really strong, you know, industry drivers there across a, a range of sectors. Um, they just came out with a really good quarterly at the end of September, 40% cash revenue growth. That's a 10th, gro- uh, 10th quarter in a row of growth. Um, 70% of their revenues are almost are recurring now, almost 70, 70%, I should say. Um, companies tracking towards sort of 20 million bucks in revenue and it's market capped at 52 mil. That's sort of, you know, caught two and a half times or uh, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to price it, um, growing 20 to 40% per annum. To me, that's just a, a real steal. Um, I think they've got good pipeline of work, you know, some potentially huge contract wins if it goes their way. And, you know, it looks like one of the few stocks I can find under a $100 million market cap that's got the cap potential to, you know, double, triple, quadruple from where it is right now. Luke, a couple of good stocks there to consider. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, mate. Have a good day.